Hello everyone and happy Earth Month. I'm Ginger Lawrence and I'm a volunteer and board member for Wild Seed Project based in Portland, Maine. And all of us here at Wild Seed Project hope to get all of you out there planting some native plants where you live. Now being April, this is not the ideal time to plant native plants as they are best planted in the late fall and early winter and I'll talk more about that later. But today I'm excited to show you how to make seed bombs. So what are seed bombs? They are these little balls uh, made of potting soil, clay, seeds, and a little bit of water to hold them together. And seed bombing is an ancient practice that was used by farmers to spread seed over a large area with minimal effort and without disturbing the soil. And another advantage to encasing seeds in uh, a clay ball like this is because it offers some protection to the seeds. Uh, the seeds will not get blown away by the wind, and also um, they're not, they won't tend to be eaten by birds or uh, any other animals that are coming by. So a plant's job is to spread its seeds far and wide. And seeds come in many different shapes and sizes in order to take advantage of anything that might move them. Some seeds are covered with fluffy things, and they are carried by the wind. I'll be looking for those for the next month. Some seeds have sticky things that attach to our clothing or to animal fur, and um, they are dispersed that way. If you've ever been walking in the woods and your legs are, or clothes are covered with beggar's ticks that you can't get off and make their way into your washing machine, then you know what I mean. And many seeds are carried by birds and animals to different places. Um, the birds are an and other animals will eat the seeds, they pass through the digestive tract, and they're pooped out afterward um, in many different places. So we'll be planting native plants with our seed bombs. And these are plants that have been in eastern North America since ancient times. And since colonial times, uh, plants and animals that were brought here from other places have colonized our landscapes. So they're one reason why we have lost so many of our native plants. Another reason we have lost them is that they have lost a place to grow. We've built roads and buildings and houses and all kinds of uh, areas that have removed the native plant populations. So it's up to us to get those native plants back in the landscape. So let's get started. The materials you'll need to make seed bombs are um, potting soil, preferably organic. And I use kitty litter and I have Tilt the screen down so you can see. Um, you're going to use equal amounts of potting soil and kitty litter. This is kitty litter without any additives. We don't want to add any chemicals into the soil. I use a quarter cup of each. It will make a t about 20 seed bombs. So you'll need water um, and um, I also like to keep a bowl of warm water nearby so I can rinse my hands and an old dishcloth. So you'll start by just mixing the clay and potting soil together. And then just start drizzling water over the top. Back to the days of childhood, making mud, mud pies. And you're just going to keep working um, the water into the soil and clay. The clay takes a little time to hydrate. So sometimes I'll mix my um, seed bomb mixture and go do something else and then come back and check it. So add your water slowly. It's much easier to um, moisten than to have um, a big mud puddle. And you just keep working and working. And this is getting closer. So at this point, I would probably leave this for about five or 10 minutes and allow the clay to hydrate and then come back. So a little rinse here. Right. So I have um, 
some seed bomb mix that I've already mixed up and you can see it's chunky. So to form the seed bomb, you're going, just going to take a pinch. You want these seed bombs to be pretty small and then just start pressing together. Sort of pressing it as if you were trying to make a ball. And when it feels firm enough, you can roll it between your fingers and there you have a cute little seed ball. I think these are adorable. Okay. Another pinch. So um, if you find that your um, mixture is too wet, um, you can try letting it sit a little bit longer or just adding a little bit of uh, clay to it. And another. And um, one of, I like to also keep water here because after you've been making them, sometimes your hands can be a little muddy and sticky and it almost pulls the balls apart when you're trying to uh, work with them. So I try to just keep rinsing my hands. If you find that your mixture isn't quite there yet, just dab a little water in your hand and it's enough to moisten and get that to hold together. Okay, just do one more. So these are pretty small. Mine used to be really big. I've just worked at, at, at trying to get them to be small. If I'm going to plant um, a larger seed, I might use a larger seed ball. So this is an example of how things are getting a little sticky. So I'm just going to rinse and then come back to that. Much easier to handle. And there's a little a larger one. Okay, so I have some seed bombs all made. We'll add these to them. And they're ready for the seeds. And now for the part I know you've all been waiting for, putting seeds in your seed bombs. And before we choose our seeds, it's important to understand something about our native plants. Almost all of our native plants need winter to germinate. They need the cold temperatures, the snow, the ice, the rain, and the alternating freezing and thawing that goes on during winter in order to break their seed coat. And this is because these plants have been around since ancient times and they've adapted to winter and it is part of their life cycle. So being April, our choices for plants that will germinate this spring are limited, and for those that will actually flower this summer are even more limited. So if you go to the Wild Seed Project website at www.wildseedproject.net and search for seed bombs, you'll find all the information you need about making seed bombs, growing native plants from seed, um, and which plants are best suited um, for planting in the early spring. So I have several um, varieties with me. We have a seed sale on Wild Seed Project. This is what our packets look like. And I have um, a couple varieties that will bloom this year. One is black-eyed coneflower, and the other is partridge pea, which is an annual. I have a couple short-lived perennials that will germinate this year, but probably not bloom. There's a chance that you can get bloom, but probably not. Uh, one is spotted bee balm, and the other is scotch bellflower. And um, there are many species of asters, and the asters can all be planted in early spring. They will germinate, but will not bloom until the second year. And almost all of our perennials will not bloom the first year. Uh, they, will, they take two to three years to, um, to bloom. So I've chosen black-eyed coneflower to put in my seed bombs. And um, you're just going to take one of your seed balls, make a depression with your forefinger or thumb, then take your wet finger, pick up a couple seeds with it, place them in the depression, and pinch the edges together. If you want them to look perfect, you can roll them back up in a ball but we don't have to be perfect here. Julia Child wasn't 
perfect with her TV show. I think she once dropped a chicken on the floor. And there we go. If you're going to use a larger seeds for your seed bombs, like milkweed seeds, you'll only want to put about two or three seeds into your seed bomb. And there they are. So that's it. You're all ready to go seed bombing. Some good locations to check your seed bombs could be uh, railway lines, abandoned lots, roadsides, especially where construction's been done, or any place where you would like to see repopulated with native plants. Last winter, I was on a seed bombing mission because the spring before, our town had excavated out a drainage ditch. And that ditch had been full of coastal joe pie weed and bone set and asters and goldenrods and lots of other native flowers. Last summer, not one flower bloomed and it made me very sad. So over the course of late fall and winter, I would make bunches of seed bombs to repopulate with the native plants that were there, and I'd go down and chuck them, and it made me feel good about the fact that in a couple of years, those plants will all be back there. So I'll have a video about that uh, following this video. So I hope you've enjoyed making seed bombs. I've enjoyed showing you, and um, have a great time. We'll do some seed bombing. So this is a picture of the drainage ditch before it was excavated. Blooming in the first picture is bone set. And in the second picture, we have coastal joe pie weed along with many other native wildflowers. So it certainly doesn't feel like a day in the middle of April with May only a couple weeks away. It's really cold out today. Um, but this is the drainage ditch I mentioned. It was completely excavated and all the native plants on both sides were white though. So in the winter I came and threw seeds that need winter to germinate. And right now I have the seed bombs that we made today and they're, uh, I'm using asters because all the asters will germinate. So these are asters that like part sun, part shady. I have uh, some New England asters here and um, they also like soil that's a little bit moist. So I'm going to toss them on either side of this drainage ditch which still has water in it. That's it.